Somebody needs to put me in charge of renaming some birds. Blue-winged teals, for example. Sure, they have blue on their wings, but you can't usually see it unless the birds fly. And besides, the cinnamon teal has almost identical blue in its wings. Not that anyone's seeking my opinion on the matter, but I'd call this bird the speckled duck. Or call him the polka dot duck. That'd identify the bird immediately and sound folksy in the bargain. The blue wing's back is dark brown scallops giving way to chocolate polka dots on the side. A gray head shot through with a rosy hue and a crescent moon stamped behind its beak borders his dappled and dot-dusted torso. Author Pete Dunn reckons one could stare at his patterns until time suspends itself. The blue-winged is a minor beauty in that he's one of our smaller ducks, a dabbler rather than a diver, but a dabbler who doesn't upend himself as, say, mallards or these shovelers do. He feeds in water shallow enough to walk in, moving forward with his head partly submerged, using his bill like a spatula to scoop food up. It's spring migration now, and these teals are last in, first out, meaning that they're the last of the ducks to reach their nesting grounds in the spring and the first to leave. That's at least in part because they winter so far south some even as far as Venezuela and Colombia. By early April, most ducks, including teals, have picked a mate. There are always fewer female ducks than males because the females, nesting on the ground as they do, suffer more predation. So an unattached female in spring, notice the one without a crescent moon? She's more popular than she cares to be. The bachelor's surrounder, chaser, pursuer as if she might be their last chance to avoid celibacy for the rest of the season, and she might be.